You are training on adopting ed tech and privacy. My name is Amelia Vance, and I'm the Director of Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. As part of today's training, we're going to go through the responsibilities of teachers and school officials in adopting commercial ed tech platforms, products, and services, and understand the responsibilities of teachers and administrators in protecting student data that is shared with third parties. A great deal of the content that we're gonna be going over comes from or is reflected in the Educator's Guide to Student Data Privacy, the guide put out by the Future of Privacy Forum and Connect Safely. We'll have a link to it in the chat and in the link next to this video. So how do you move forward with privacy protective adoption of ed tech? So first of all, see if your school or district has a policy for when you as an educator can adopt a new ed tool with your students. Does your school or district have a process for vetting ed tech tools for privacy, security, and alignment with pedagogy? Does your school or district maintain a list of approved or vetted ed tech products that you can safely adopt? Often, districts might have hundreds, if not thousands, of third-party partners supporting various aspects of a district's work. Ideally, districts will keep a centralized list of their ed tech providers as part of their data governance programs. As you saw in the video in the playlist right before this training, it's important to ask before you app. So determine who in your school or district has the authority to approve new ed tech products. Review to see if the app or service that you're interested in adopting has already been evaluated and approved. If it's an approved product, check if there is a contract in place that is privacy protective. And if not, is one likely to be required? Do you have to go through that review with an administrator or have a contract put in place? Unfortunately, not all districts, not all schools have the capacity to vet products for educators to then use in the classroom. So, if you do have to review it yourself, and I highly recommend having someone else do it, if at all possible, there are some resources available to go through the process of doing that evaluation. Some key questions to ask. Does the product collect personally identifiable information? So this we discussed earlier in the training. You have data PII that can be used to identify individuals. So this is direct identifiers, such as someone's name, someone's date of birth, their address, perhaps their email address, information that is directly linked to them. You also have indirect identifiers, indirect information, such as their demographic information, their socioeconomic status, that could not alone be linked back to them, but perhaps if you combined a few indirect factors, you could figure out who you're talking about. So if we say that uh, the woman with short brown hair who coaches the track team, you could probably re-identify exactly who that is, even though I've only really given you indirect identifiers. You also have de-identified data. So this is data about individual students that has enough information removed that a student cannot be re-identified. So you can't trace back who that student is. You might have aggregate data. So this is information about groups of students at a summary level. This is often the data that gets shared as part of the school's federal reporting requirements to make sure that schools are serving all students equitably. And then metadata. We talked about this a little bit in the last training. This is data about data. So for example, how long a student took to perform on a test versus their actual grade, which would be either an indirect identifier or a direct identifier, if perhaps they're the only student who got an A. So some more questions to consider 
in vetting a product that will go through pretty quickly, and you can look at more information in that educator's guide to student data privacy. Does the vendor in their terms of service or privacy policy commit not to further share student information other than is needed to provide the educational product or service that you want? Does the vendor create a profile of students other than for the educational services specified? They're not allowed under multiple state laws and federal laws to have a student profile for any reason outside of the authorized educational purpose. When you cancel the account or delete the app, will the vendor delete all of the student personal information that has been provided or created? Does the product show advertisements? Ads are allowed, but many states ban ads that are targeted based on data about students. Does the vendor allow parents to access data it holds about students or enable schools to access data so the school can provide the data to parents if they request it, which is required under FERPA? And a few final questions. Does the vendor promise that it provides appropriate security for the data it protects or that it collects? Does the vendor claim that it can change its privacy policy without notice at any time, even for significant changes? This can be a significant red flag. Does the vendor say that if the company is sold, all bets are off? The policy should state that any sale or merger will require the new company to adhere to the same protections or allow people an opportunity to delete their information. And then finally, do some online searching. Are there any reviews or articles about the product or vendor that raise red flags that cause you concern? Here are some additional potential resources to help you if you have to conduct vetting on your own. I am a particular fan of the Meet Martin video linked here and in the comments where a representative from the Department of Education walked through how his dog tried to take over the world by creating an ed tech company and how they foiled his dastardly plot by changing his terms of service. It is highly entertaining and not just for this privacy nerd. Other useful resources, there is a model terms of service checklist which provides both best practices to look for in terms of service as well as problematic practices to avoid. The Student Data Privacy Consortium has links to privacy protective contracts, and who knows, your district may be one of the districts using the consortium and may have a list of apps that can be used safely because the vendor has signed a privacy protective contract linked on their website. Common Sense Media's privacy program has really great vetting of individual ed tech apps. Now, it's important to remember that apps are updated all the time. And if you're vetting them at one point in time, the product might change and there might be new privacy or security concerns that arise because of the changes in the update. However, especially in a situation where you have to quickly adopt online learning tools, Common Sense Media has a great list of apps that they've gone through and vetted and rated to say where they are on the privacy scale. You can also look at the Student Privacy Pledge run by my organization where companies voluntarily pledge to adhere to a certain set of principles such as not targeting advertising to students, not selling student data, and otherwise being a good steward of student data in multiple ways. You can also check out the resource Polisis, an AI tool which automatically analyzes student privacy policies for you and rates how they're doing on privacy. Not always perfectly accurate, but it can be really entertaining to see how it rates the privacy policies for some of the apps that you may be using in the classroom. With that, we have a slightly adapted checklist from educators originally created by the Ventura County Office of Education in California. So let's go through this. 
you've found a great age-appropriate educational app. Can you use it? Well, does this app collect personal student information? So under FERPA, this would be called personally identifiable information. You may have state laws that call it something like covered information or personal information. The key is it is any information, again, that can be traced back to an individual student. So if the app doesn't collect personal student information, then you can probably use it, but be careful. Some apps say that they don't collect personal information, but they might collect that metadata that we talked about that could be traced back to students based on perhaps other websites they visited or other information that the website is collecting. Still take a look at their terms of service and privacy policy. So if more likely the app does collect personal student information, let's move to our next question. Is the personal information that they collect displayed publicly? For example, listing an email address in a website that offers a forum. Can anyone see that information? If yes, gotta stop. Refer to your district or school policy and parental consent may be appropriate here. If not, move to our next step. Can the app use personal information for anything other than an educational purpose. This is where you look at their terms of service or privacy policy and see what they say about it. If no, you can move to our next question. If yes, gotta stop, refer to your district or school policy, seriously consider not using the app, and parental consent is probably required. Moving to our next question, is the app provider allowed to sell or share personal information according to their terms of service or privacy policy? If no, you can continue. But if yes, again, stop, refer to your district or school policy, seriously consider whether it is in the best interests of your students to use the app, and parental consent, if you do choose to use the app, is likely required. Again, consider some of the equity consequences we discussed in the last training that consent raised. All right, our last question here. So can the app use personal information for targeted or behavioral advertising? If yes, again, stop. Really consider whether it's in the best interest of your student, whether the benefits definitely outweigh the risks, Consider not using it, and parental consent is likely required under all state and federal laws. If no, all of the obvious red flags are now out of the way, but that doesn't mean that the app is safe or compliant with laws. If possible, still go through a district vetting process. If not, go through some of the questions that we went through earlier that are printed in the Educator's Guide to Student Privacy. So key to all of this is making sure not only that you're being privacy and security aware as you adopt apps, but also that you're being transparent as you adopt them to students themselves and parents. So this is a great uh, portion of a website from Jeffco Public Schools in Colorado talking about the importance of transparency. They note that as partners, we can continue to build trust with our parents by proactively communicating what technology tools are being used in your classroom and what you are doing to protect student data. Show that we are using the right tools, gathering the right data, using that data correctly, and keeping it safe. They mentioned that there are many ways in which people can communicate with parents. We'll have a training on communication later on. And specifically, they list information that can be included to inform parents about, for example, the name of a tool that's being used, why it's being used, what is your instructional intent, how do students interact with the tool, and how do they access the tool, do they create a profile, and if so, what data is required to enter, what is the link to the tool website, and what is the link to the privacy policy.
If you do decide to go with content, we wanted to share an example from Denver Public Schools in Colorado, which has a great privacy parental consent cover letter for teachers that they can use to both inform parents about what tools are being used and, as needed, ask for consent. Feel free to adopt this tool for your particular needs. We are now at the end of this training, so I will leave you with one activity. Search online for the name of an education app you use with your students, combined with either the words student privacy or data breach. Did you find anything that surprised you? Thank you so much for joining our training.